Russian security forces have arrested more than 1,000 people protesting against the mobilization of reservists to fight in Ukraine. President Vladimir Putin is calling up an extra 300,000 backup personnel. He says the mobilization is aimed at liberating the eastern Donbass region, where Ukrainian forces are staging a counteroffensive. Western leaders say the call-up is in response to Russian losses on the battlefield. Vladimir Putin's latest decree is not going unchallenged in Russia. But the state's crackdown is hard nonetheless. A protest monitoring group says mass arrests have been made across the country, including in Moscow. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. The most valuable thing that they can take from us is the lives of our children. I won't give them my child's life. Putin has called the mobilization necessary and urgent. He accused the West of crossing a line by providing sophisticated weapons to Ukraine. I'd like to remind you that our country also has various weapons of destruction and in certain aspects even more modern weapons than NATO countries. If there's a threat to the territorial integrity of our country, in order to protect Russia and our people, we will certainly use all the means at our disposal. This is not a bluff. The announcement has also triggered an apparent exodus of people unwilling to join the conflict. Many of these Russians arriving in Serbia are still fearful of speaking in opposition to the war. Uh, I I speak with you and I'm afraid, I'm afraid uh, because uh, my government and uh, police uh, can uh, see it and uh, I will have problem in my country. Uh, but, uh, but I want to say uh, freedom for Ukraine. Uh, I, I want to please somebody stop Putin. The prices of one-way flights from Russia has been skyrocketing since Putin's speech and they're still selling out fast. A short while ago, I asked Andras Raj of the German Council on Foreign Relations what he made of Putin's mobilization. Well, this move constitutes a major change in how Russia has been waging this war. Before this mobilization, from Russia's perspective, mostly such Russian personnel was fighting in Ukraine who chose to do so. Professional soldiers, contracted soldiers, mercenaries and voluntarily based, uh, voluntarily mobilized uh, territorial units. However, now on, from now on with the mobilization, large segments of the Russian uh, society will get directly affected basically by force, by coercion. So from now on, participation in the war for the average Russian will not be a voluntary thing, but something which the state pushes him uh, to do so. This is a major change for the Russian society. Yeah, and it brings the war a lot closer to home for the Russian population, doesn't it? This is not going down well. We've seen protests already today, people scrambling to leave the country. Why would Putin risk this kind of backlash? Most probably the Russian leadership calculates that protests will die down quite quickly, or if not, they could be repressed. And anyways, we are talking about a country of 140 million. A few thousands are protesting in a few cities and hundreds of these few protesters are getting arrested. So probably the, the Kremlin calculates that it, it can quickly repress or at least manage the dissatisfaction of the society so the mobilization can go on. It's no secret, though, that the Russian army is already struggling to equip the troops it has in Ukraine at the moment. Does it even have the resources to train, incorporate, dress and arm 300,000 more soldiers? This is one of the, the largest question marks about the whole mobilization. I mean, uh, it's not only about calling in the man. Just as you said, uh, you have to train them, you have to equip, equip them, you have to transport them to the front line. The most important bottleneck of all these is actually the training. Because those professional and contract soldiers who could train these newly coming reservists are actually either fighting in Ukraine or are already wounded and dead. So it's a, it's a big question mark whether Russia will be able to provide these reservists with the sufficient training. And if not, I'm quite afraid that this freshly mobilized Russian man will be sent to the front line with improper training, meaning that heavy losses are likely to occur among them. So you don't believe this will be a game changer? 
actually what I believe is that by putting more, I mean, additional 300,000 soldiers on the front line, but reservists improperly trained, improperly equipped, it will not be a game changer. It will just be more of the same, a lot more of the same, however. Uh, this very thinly veiled nuclear threat he aimed at the West in his address earlier today. How concerned should we be about that? I wouldn't um, be too much concerned about this this nuclear this nuclear threat. In terms of content, it did not really differ from the previous nuclear saber rattling that the Russian leadership has uh, has done a few, a few a few times already. It constitutes a bit of a change, though, though because ever since the the beginning of the summer. Russia has not mentioned the possibility of using nuclear uh, nuclear weapons, so we had basically kind of a three-month period of a lull of, of silence about nuclear weapons. Now Putin again came up uh, came up with this narrative. However, the good news is that uh, there there are no signs that Russia would actually mobilize its nuclear forces. Andras Rash of the German Council on Foreign Relations, thank you so much.